Hi everyone, Franco from Your Guitar Academy. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Good Riddance by Green Day. So pick up your guitar, let's get started. Right, so the first thing we've got is the intro of the song. And the intro is basically over a G major chord. Um, just a quick side note, you're probably going to see me play G major that way. So my pinky is flat on the B and high E strings on fret number three, which I know is weird, but that's just the way I've learned how to play it. You can definitely play the whole song uh, every time you've got that G major with fingers two and uh, sorry three and four, it's perfectly fine. So the intro starts with that shape, and you're going to play the low E string twice. Then uh, you're going to jump to the open uh, G string and the D string. So it's going to go. And what you want to do after you hear these four notes is you want to mute the strings to make it sound super dry. So you'll see my right hand just landing on the strings just to mute them. And you do that twice. That's it. OK, let's move on to the first verse of the song. So for the verse, we're going to, de we're going to need sorry, G major, followed by C add 9. So C add 9, basically what you've got to do to play that is just drop these two fingers, so fingers 1 and 2, down the string. But you keep fingers 3 and 4. And then after this one, we're going to need D major. So the transition from C add 9 is pretty convenient. You can keep your ring finger on. Again, I tend to play that with the pinky. So you'll see me play a weird, probably, I'll do my best, but you're probably going to see me play D that way, <clears throat> which is fine because I'm not supposed to play that high E string. Anyway, I'll do my best to play it the regular way. So that's the three chords we need. And we're going to spend two bars on that G major. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, then one bar on C add nine, four, and and I played my weird D major. Uh, one bar on that D major at the end. So again, one more time, I'll do it the regular way. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the chords for the verse. Now, what he does there is a mix between a picking pattern and a strumming pattern. I'm going to show you the strings he's playing on this, but keep in mind that on the second part of me showing you the verse, I'll show you the strumming pattern. That's actually the way I want you to think about this song. Right, so let's look at the pattern string per string. So he starts with the low E string twice, and then we're gonna jump to the B string, back to the G string, then D string, and back again to the G string. So. That's pretty much the whole pattern for the rest of the song. So it's really important to get that right. The reason why we're starting from uh, fret number three on the low E string here is because that's the root note of the chord. Everything else from this point on, we're going to keep the same pattern, especially on the first half of the song, but the root note's going to have to move. So for example, on C add nine, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time starting from the A string, which is now that, that note C, that's your new root note for that chord. <laughs> But notice how the strings I'm playing, except for that A string, are the same. So if I play these two chords, you've got G twice. Played it wrong, sorry. C. And on D, we're going to do the same thing. So once you get a sense of that kind of melody we're playing underneath the chords, I'd rather have you think about the movement of your right hand so the right hand is doing down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now what we're doing, if I count along, if I count along, sorry, is one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. So try to keep that pattern rolling, because essentially what I'm doing when I'm playing the song is I'm thinking about this pattern, but instead of strumming all the strings, I'm just focusing my right hand on that one string I want to hear. So if I play it faster, you'll see that my right hand is still doing down, down, up, up, down, up. Now notice that if I'm doing this, I'm gonna start playing strings that we're not supposed to play. Since the shapes we're playing are actual chord shapes, and since I'm always starting from the root note of that chord on beat number one, 
we're safe. All the notes we're going to play, even if it's not the right string, they're still going to sound right. Now, on the recording, they're very precise. They, they really go... But I do think if you're playing the song, especially if you want to sing along, keeping the pattern in mind rather than the strings you're playing, you'll sound the same. And it's going to actually add a little bit of color to your string pattern. See what I mean? So it's just a little bit of a difference of color, but watching live performances, he's definitely doing that more than what is on the recording. Okay, so that's for the verse. Now, moving on to the pre-chorus, we've got different chords. We've got E minor for a whole bar, so four beats, followed by D major, four beats as well, C add nine, that we've seen just before, and G major. And the pre-chorus is played twice every time, so it would go. Same thing here, I'm keeping the same exact pattern we've seen on the verse. Again, I don't want to be too precise, that's the way I've played it on the video you've just watched. Um, and I think, again, it's just a question of vibe. You could just be a little bit more precise if you do want to sound like the recording, but the strings we're playing are exactly the same as the strings I've shown you um, just before on the verse. So that's for the pre-chorus. Very simple stuff, same pattern. Again, we always start from the root note. So E minor, you would start from the low E string. Then D major from the D string. Uh, C and line again from the A string. And then we finish with G major again. So as long as you keep that going and you hit that right string at the right time, you're safe. I'll play it one more time slower. Watch my right hand, make sure you've got that wrist loose. And again, if you bleed over a little bit and you hit a string that is not supposed to be played, it's not the end of the world, it's part of the vibe of the song. Right, moving on to the chorus of the song. So the chorus, we've got E minor for a whole bar, four beats, G major, same thing, four beats, back to E minor, four beats again, G major again, and then we finish with E minor, and this time instead of G major, a D major. Same exact pattern again. So if I play that chorus, it would go. And then what he does is goes back to um, the verse of the song. So that would be again G major. Now, what's interesting is the pattern is exactly the same on the chorus, but the first chorus, you want to bring the dynamics up a little bit. So you want to start strumming and you know what I said, Bleeding over and playing a string you don't really want to play is not the end of the world. Well, here on that chorus, I think it's even more important to actually strum a little bit more because step by step, we want to get into another strumming pattern, which is the one they play on the second part of the song. So if I play that chorus the way I would play it, I would go like that. And you see that last E minor to D major, I'm really going, I'm obviously putting an accent on it now because I'm teaching it to you, but I'm really going down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So the same pattern as before. One, two, and, and, four, and, one, two, and, and, four, and. Um, so think of this strumming pattern as something that is constantly there, but sometimes you're very precise with it and you're just strumming one string, and sometimes you're strumming a little bit more, especially at the end of that first chorus. Now, the rest of the song is strummed a lot more. There's a lot more energy to it. So the strumming pattern is going to change a little bit, but the structure is still the same. The chords you've learned for the verse, pre-chorus and chorus are still the same. We're not changing it. So we start from the verse on um, with a different pattern that sounds like this. Okay, so again, same chords. We still have two bars on that first G major, one bar on that C and nine, and one bar on that D major. The pattern I'm playing is a pattern that is built over two bars. So it's a little bit more tricky to remember and to learn 
than um, the pattern we've just learned. You could just play the same pattern we've learned and just repeat it over. I do think this one adds more dynamics, just more fun to play. Um, so the pattern I'm playing goes like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. So on G major, it would go like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. Of course, keeping the right hand moving down on all the beats, so all the numbers I'm saying. I'll do it one more time, just staying on that G major for now. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. And now you see how that pattern account to four twice. So it's two bars. It's a pattern that is played over two bars. So that means you're going to play it once on that G major, um, because G major is played over two bars. So the whole G major of the verse would go. Then we would switch to C add 9, but C add 9 is played for just one bar, so half that pattern. And same thing for the next D major that follows. So C add 9. In theory, I should play that next upstroke. What we'll do though is we're going to push that D. So the D that is coming next, I'm going to start playing it sooner than we should, basically. I'm going to play it on the end of beat number 4 of that first bar. Let me do that, I'll count along. So C, add 9 to D major. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and. I'll do that one more time. Pay attention to that push on D major on the end of beat number four of the first bar. One, two, three, and four. So that means the whole verse would go. To C. Push. And one more time. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and C line. I do the same thing speeding up. Now we're going to start hearing the actual song. Right, so the rest of the song, what's really cool about it is you're going to keep the same pattern I've just played with that push, and you're just going to apply it to the same chords we've seen just before. So for example, if I look at the pre-chorus, so pre-chorus, remember, we had E minor for four beats, D major for four beats, C add nine for four beats, and G. I would still apply the same pattern to these chords and still do a push every other chord. So it would go E, C add 9, G. One more time, just a break chord. So E, push, C add 9, push. And same thing if I speed up, you'll start hearing the song more. I'm putting an accent on that push. I do like the sound of it. I think you can definitely do that. So I'm just strumming a little bit harder on that push. Now, playing a push like that is always a little bit challenging at first. So if it's too much, don't add that accent. It's not the end of the world. Um, but you see, basically, two patterns to learn, one for the beginning of the song, one for the end of the song. Right, I hope that made sense. Have fun with this song, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.